Alright, hey everybody, I'm going to show you guys how to create a RESTful API that consumes uh, JSON or XML. Um, it doesn't matter, it'll do both. And that uh, returns the result in either or, but in this example, to stay quick, we're going to just return the results in JSON using the default um, JSON action result. So first thing we need to do is you need to go to my github and get cmcore.net here and this has a lot of classes that you can use in your projects has some builders a lot of good extensions um, and then it has uh, encryption so a good uh, encryption adapter here and it has serialization so we're going to be using the JSON and XML serializers here so get that download it and let's create a new project it will be a ASP MVC project and I'll just call this one tutorial rest okay Hit OK don't want unit tests and here we go. So we want to create our own controller here. So add controller. I'll call this rest controller. And we don't want all those methods. We just want the default index method. So in a RESTful API, we don't have all these um, actions like save, delete, update that are displayed in the URL. We just have the base URL and then um, if it's a HTTP post, then we're posting data, HTTP delete, delete data and everything, the URL shouldn't change. So we're going to copy this index method a few times, or at least once, I'm not going to do the others. And the way we differentiate these methods is using constraints. So on this one, we'll have HTTP get, so all get requests get sent to that action on the controller and on this one we'll have HTTP post All right. and in models here we want a new class and this class will be called um, I don't know developer okay and in this developer class let's create some properties so public string name um, public string damn it what computer whether it's a desktop or a laptop you know whatever and then um, we'll have one more public uh, public stream oh, what does it develop a uh, phone alright so we have this object here and we need to make it serializable and we also need one more thing which we need to add a reference in our project here too so add reference in all the dot net um, references we need system runtime dot serialization Okay, and we'll do an import here using system runtime serialization and we need to apply the tags of data contract to the class and then to the properties we need to apply a data member and this is used for JSON serialization okay alright so now that we have this build out. Let's go back into our REST controller and on the post we'll have this method take that object. So using tutorial.models we want this to take a developer and for both of these we're going to have JSON return results. So JSON is equal to a new object and the second parameter here will be JSON request behavior allow git and we'll just say request equals git alright so that one's done 
and in this one we'll just do the same and we're just going to return this model all right so we have a restful controller we could add more index methods with constraints for what um, HTTP method they use but you get the idea so now we need to update our route so our route name default we don't have an ID and the controller is rest action index and remove that okay so our route set up this is fine now it's time to get into serial or deserialization of JSON and XML so we'll use the model binder to do this which is a good place it just works and uh, this is where we need to import my cmcore.net so in our solution here let's hit add existing project and then find your download from my github and core cmcore.net and we'll import that and then in our web project let's add reference as a project reference okay so now that we have this let's create a new folder named model binders and then we will create a new class and for simplicity's sake instead of having a few different classes we'll just have one and we'll call this API default model binder okay and we need a few imports um, system web MVC then core CM dot serialization and this model binder needs to inherit from default model binder and we need our public override of bind model okay so now that we have this let's create a private method and it will return a not serializable attribute serialization adapter and we'll call this get um, yeah I get adapter and this will take a string of content type okay so the adapters in my core library here um, or these the XML and JSON serializers they follow the adapter pattern so they have a common interface and you don't really have to worry about the implementation of it so the interface here is serialization adapter so we can create the reference here and we'll just have a simple if statement so if content type contains JSON so if the content types like um, uh, Content type application JSON or um, HTTP or text JSON, whatever. This will handle that. And then else if content type contains XML, then we'll do that. Else, always have an else, either throw an exception or you know whatever adapter equals null and we really don't need to do that but you'd probably want to throw an exception here or handle it because uh, you're going to be calling something on a null adapter okay so now that we have this we can just say adapter equals and there's a factory method on serialization adapter called git adapter and then you just pass in the serialization adapter type and currently there's two types JSON and XML so this one will take the JSON let's just copy that down and this one will be XML All right, and we will return adapter okay so now that we have that 
let's do a quick check up here so let's get our request object so var request equals controller context HTTP context dot request and let's say var adapter equals get adapter and we'll pass in request dot content type okay so this could be null whatever we return here so we'll say if adapter equals null then then it's not um, a content type of XML or JSON and we'll just return the default model binder and let it handle that so else we need to serialize this or deserialize it so let's create an object object data equals null and this adapter here it has a method uh, so um, you should probably wrap this adapter and a try catch but for this tutorial I won't worry about it so data equals adapter dot deserialize and there's three overloads here so see one takes a byte array the other takes a string and the other takes a stream so you can pass any of these in here and we'll just pass request dot input stream and then the second parameter is the type and this is the type of object that's or the type of object that should be the result of the deserialization so to get the type we just use our binding context then we need model metadata and then model type so that gets us our model type and before we do this because we're using the request input stream and if you were to read this request input stream into a string or a byte array you want to do this before so request dot input stream dot position equals zero so we need to reset it back because if um, there were more than one read done by this input stream then um, we need to make sure we're in the right position Okay and we'll just return data all right and we really don't need this we could just have a return here and I think I'll, I'll just do that all right so there's our model binder we have one method here that will get our serializer it's got a common interface so we can just call after we get it as long as it's not null we can just call deserialize we can pass in a stream a string or a byte array and then then the model type so this should deserialize it for us so let's register this model binder as our default model binder in our global ASAX so in here we need system uh, web MVC model binders dot binders uh, default binder equals a new instance of tutorial model binders API default model binder let me break this bam alright so there's our new model binder and everything should be good to go so let's run this and let me get my app running okay so let's get the URL here um, when this finally loads we should see a JSON object here so we do so let's put this URL in here and a post and let's make a JSON object here so if it's nothing we get no 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 and um, let me do this in notepad okay so what we have we had a uh, name we had a computer uh, desktop and uh, what was a phone phone is 
so we have our JSON here so let's post this in and if we hit query you will see null null that's because we didn't specify a content type so we need to add that content type header here and then application JSON okay so now our response back should be our object so there we go our model binder worked for JSON so let's try XML so let me rewrite this um, and then we need a uh, name hopefully this will work alright up top okay so let me paste this in no code changes all we have to do is change content type to XML query and we get the exact same response back computer laptop now and this even works with URL form encoded so if we set the content type to that or nothing and we can do a query string or API model binder it can handle that as well so name equals Mike and computer equals uh, MacBook and phone equals Atrix. Query it and we get it back just the same. So everything we need your form encoded query string JSON and XML it consumes it fine converts it into the models and we have that in our controllers ready to be used so pretty simple pretty easy with MVC and uh, if you have any questions just ask